You did, Kyle. Of course he is. Of course it is. Kyle is always muted. I'm just... Oh, dear God. Don't tell me he just froze. <laughs> Are you sure? Oh, wow. M- kidding me? What the hell? There is. I'm back, everybody! Yeah! Oh, yeah. He didn't screw everything up. Oh, not yet. <laughs> Uh, but my internet connection is unstable, so this will be a night. Yeah. Am I actually still here, or you are, yes, you're still here? You're here. I hear you. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Credit at M Homo Inc. Cthulhu Rises. Everybody dies. I have three wonderful players. I'm not sure where they are, but <laughs> I found these vagrants off the street, oh, so I'm going to go ahead and use them for tonight. Uh, guys, you can follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to play with us, you can hit us up at mhobo Inc. on Twitter or at mhobo Inc. at gmail.com. Gosh, it's been a lot. It hasn't actually been a while. No, I keep saying that every weeks. single time. It's I say it every long. time. That way I have like an excuse like, oh, I'm just pretending. But again, my leg is just so warm right now. It is <laughs> insane. Like I expect to see like a little crotch goblin just <coughs> pumping it or something like that oh, Jesus. Uh, and just keeping it warm with its body heat it's it's that disturbing anyway guys if you want to listen to our podcast don't necessarily want to see our faces um i can understand for at least four of the five people here tonight why you wouldn't want to do that but i mean yeah four out of five is real bad uh you can hit us up at podbean podcast where you can get the audio version only uh although i don't understand why you don't just you know open up your computer while you're driving to work and watch us it's so much better finally if you want to buy some really cool awesome swag to keep you warm while you're out in your garage freezing your butt off except for that again really awkward place on your leg where it's really really warm uh, you can do that at threadless.com at mhobo inc. Get some really cool cred merchandise. The calamity stuff isn't bad either, but the cacophony, cacophony. is average. Uh, <laughs> let's face it, guys. The cred stuff is the best stuff. Where else do you get giant octopuses uh, climbing out of volcanoes uh, and people stabbing themselves in the back? I will tell you a behind-the-scenes story, though. Despite being a show called Cthulhu Rises, Everyone Dies, and having a husband who loves Cthulhu, uh, Carol has no idea how to actually spell Cthulhu, and she just about oh. sent out the wrong spelling. It was terrible. Oh, oh, it was yeah, disgraceful. No, it was a freaking typo. Uh, typo. Gotcha. Yeah, it was a typo. It was a typo. Okay. Uh, guys, if you want to get some really cool dice, hit us. Jeez. Sponsors up Pirate Dog Dice. They will make you the best set of dog poop dice you have oh, ever Jesus seen. Christ. The best. I prefer to think of it as the six because I like to eat dogs and dogs are number one in my heart. Rescued my Terran dice out of the basement. But and... I don't use them. <laughs> they only work for Terran. Are you sure you haven't been using them with the way you roll? I know, sure you've right? Been using them. Nope, nope. I've been using them. Okay. I need. That's why I'm putting an order in for a set of a hundred dice. <laughs> See if they'll change my fortune. They won't. <laughs> uh, our other sponsor tonight Probably is not. Oddfish Games. Uh, they have awesome smells like Old Library, The Road, Putrid Sewers, or this totally not made up. Carol's choleretic fence post. Oh, shit. Cat post. Okay, fine. It's a cat post these days. Uh, it was no, part it's of made up. <laughs> RPG with your cat Kickstarter. Definitely not made up, despite everything that everyone else tells you. Believe me. Look at me. Look at me. I'm not a sociopath. Trust me. It's great. Carol's mm-hmm. choleretic mm-hmm. cat post. It wasn't even Perfect. me he was referring to. It's just the funny part. Wink. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, other than that, I really can't go on and I need to catch my breath and figure out what the plan is tonight. So, introducing our wonderful cast of characters tonight, starting off with DJ. DJ, why don't you introduce yourself and your character and where we can find you? 
Uh, yes, hello. My name is DJ. I play Bran, the Way of the Mercy Monk. And, well, you can find me on cred. That's about it. Um, I'm going to have an interesting time tonight. Possibly the last. We'll see. You think? Uh, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm sure it'll be just, just fine. It's not like you decided <laughs> to put yourself in a situation of your own making. That sounds even familiar. suggesting last time that there hasn't been a lot of rain in Farzine, and so fires would be really easy to start. Whatever, though. Hey, they, they I'm, I'm not concerned be. about it. I'm not concerned about it. Carol, why don't you introduce your character and where we can find you uh, doing the other things you do? On here, or in All right. So anyway, my name is Carol, as he said. Uh, I play on here. I play Andre Yeager, my half-elven, somewhat crazy uh, ranger. What the hell am I? Yeah, ranger. Um <clears throat> And let's see, I am a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and commission mini painter. I have my own Twitch uh, where I paint minis and talk about whatever chat wants to talk about uh, at muses underscore touch. I'll be painting Saturday morning or afternoon here at 12.30 p.m. Eastern. And what else? I don't know. I'm on between the roles. I'm doing the Socium project. And I can be seen there. And well, I was doing one shots until someone decided to run a vampire game on Saturday nights. It's awesome. So uh, who knows? I may be back and you know, once in a while we'll be off probably. So I might be seeing it in one shot again. And I think that's it. All right. And well, that's it. How could you forget about Jacob? No, Wonderful that's it Merrick for me. Misto. Yeah, right. We I all know what you that. were talking about. <laughs> oh, Such a please. diva. Can you believe that, Jacob? Jacob, why don't you introduce yourself? Take the line right. for a second. Just for a second. Hi, I'm uh, Jacob. I'm playing Merrick Mismedo, the halfling scout rogue. Um, I don't have any social media, so don't don't bother trying to find me. You won't. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, Although I think Merrick's also in a hole right now, too. I'm trying to figure yeah, out how we got there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's what happens when you miss staff meetings. <laughs> <laughs> that was, a, that was, God, that was from a real gaming group. We always used to say that when somebody would be missing, and then the next session they come in, and bad stuff happened to the characters. Like, well, that's what happens when you miss staff meetings. <laughs> we uh, missed that you last reminds time. reminds me, though. Let me find. <coughs> 12d10 uh oh yeah 12d10 for what oh you're right i misread that it's actually 20d20 what the hell are you talking uh, about luckily i have a jar full of them right here ready to roll see how much damage you guys take we already did that did you though yeah yeah you did i heard i i'm i'm, I'm hurting i i don't know if you wanted to give any damage to merrick but i protected him <laughs> I'll be nice. I think he's fine. Yeah, Merrick's great. I'm the great. only one that I think actually got wrecked because I think her uh, Riley managed to misty step his way out. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I don't. He didn't take damage, did he? Well, let's go ahead and wrecked. just do a little quick review before we dive right back down into it because I <sighs> think I've delayed enough to get Ernie Riley here on time. Uh, so. We'll go ahead and delay a little bit longer and then get into it. I'm also going to do this real quick. Bloop. I'm gone forever now. What? Uh, yeah, there. Awesome. I'm amazing. Uh, bow before me. So last time on Cred, these three, four, <laughs> these four guys were uh, preparing to... Uh, cause a huge distraction for the, well, I guess she's not a former, Captain Kenza and first mate. Uh, oh my goodness, I forgot his name. That's Pasala? Pasala, that's Pasala, right. Thank you. Thank you. Pasala, Pasala. Tomato, tomato. tomato. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go the whole thing off! 
They have been smuggling the citizens out of Farzine ever since the ghouls were given free reign above and the rural Catan soldiers were really screwing down uh, uh, on any crimes in the city. Uh, and the ghouls started eating people who were uh, breaking the laws, uh, as you guys had found out. And so Captain Kenza and First Mate Pasela had been smuggling citizens out. There is a camp uh, uh, far outside the walls where these refugees uh, have been living uh, as they try and figure out what to do next, how to... Oh how to take back their homes and the jungles of Farzine are much safer than the city streets, strangely enough. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> These party, we're here to create a distraction and instead of, you know, just making a simple distraction, <laughs> they did what all players do. Let's roll a couple things and do it all at the same time. Let's strike a <coughs> blow to their military yeah. and blow up the gunpowder reserves. That'll be a distraction. We did that. Did they? Well, let me do the recap. Maybe they don't know, Carol. Maybe they don't know. <laughs> they, they blew it up. Uh, <laughs> Uh, as they were preparing, though, uh, two of the members fell deep into their dreams, one finally catching a glimpse of their patron, Ubo Sothla, but again at a terrible, terrible price, forgetting everything that happened the previous session. And not <laughs> why they were doing funny. this. Strangely enough, I needed Ernie here to answer that question. <laughs> Uh, hopefully he gets back here in time. Um, and another Anja uh, awakening into a new world, discovering that she had been traveling between different realms in her sleep. Yeah. And now I know but everybody. That was just a bunch wants... of boring stuff. That that stuff isn't going to. Now I know anymore. everybody's hunting me. <laughs> I mean, not everybody, but you know. So. The plan started with Bran uh, distracting the guards, setting loose the stables, and making off like a horse thief into the night. Uh, unfortunately, not distracting enough, as he did not pull enough guards away with him to make it easy for the rest of the party. And it was not easy, apparently, for the rest of the party. Uh, as they stumbled their way closer to the warehouse, alerted the army, the occupying soldiers, uh, and as they started to search and hunt them down, they finally managed to get their act together, thanks to one Merrick Miss Meadow, who despite the fact rolled a terrible, <laughs> terrible... We're so are sorry, you sure you're Merrick. A rogue, Merrick? A terrible sleight of hand. We are so sorry, Merrick. We did that to you. <laughs> did manage to blow up. Uh, along the way, they also... Uh, oh gosh, I I'll let you guys in on this. Remember mm -hmm. that thing that was tearing you guys apart in the dungeon? That was uh, a CR yeah. 10 creature. Oh, yeah. yeah. The thing the, you guys released? The end? Yep. Yep. Is well, a CR just... 16 creature. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. When are we... the, the one, wait, the one in the dungeon we released when we screwed with the statue. The one you no, no, screwed no, with no. the statue it was, was the CR 10. 10. Looked at it as a yeah. 10. Where's the CR 16? It was the fuzzy ball that turned into the worm. Oh, right. I'm sure that's not gonna bite anyone on the backside at all. Uh, but to be fair, I did put it there just for that reason, anyway. Doesn't it kind of disappear after a while because it was magically summoned? <laughs> Spitball in here. I don't know. <laughs> That was, that was Ernie's idea, and that's what happens when you roll a nat one. Hey, it was a great an idea. idea like that. And it did it manage to give you guys an escape tunnel. So while Merrick did not succeed in uh, giving you a lot of time to get out of there, he did manage to give you guys enough time that Riley was able to disappear down the wormhole and on just saving poor Merrick's life latched onto him and threw herself down the hole as well. Uh, while they had been stumbling along, Bran had been riding throughout the city, causing a whole bunch of ruckus, uh, had even managed to um, uh, recruit one of the uh, 
uh, uh, the patriarchs from one of the families that was being smuggled out tonight into aiding him by helping him ring bells and cause ruckus and everything like that. Uh, Bran then decided, hey, let's light the magistrate's house on fire, sneak in <laughs> through the back door uh, where he found uh, in their beds the servants all frozen by Fatnathoa's mummifying gaze. And when he walked to the main room upon the, oh, what do you call that? It isn't that landing. a question. Balcony and landing. He finds Magistrate Alwiggy and Commander Corwell, his brother. Why must you ruin everything? So, guys, let's uh, deal with uh, what happened to the other guys, and we'll deal with Bran in a bit. First of all, uh, what people may not realize is some of our members are insane. Uh, these are Gee. game insanities. These are not actual real-life insanities. If you are suffering from a real, real insanity, I suggest you call 911, uh, seek help. Um, I would say we're going to have a number that you can read off, but there actually isn't one. Uh, seek help. We all need yeah. it sometimes. It's always nice to talk to somebody. But we're playing a game right now. So if you do find yourself resembling some of these insanities... Well, I mean... Usually it's it's worse. You than that. might be in the movie <laughs> Mazes and Monsters. Oh, oh, deep pull right there, maybe. Mm. So, Anja, you are the hero of last session, grabbing onto Merrick, wrapping those muscular arms around his frail old man little body. Jesus. He's middle aged, I guess. Not, I don't not an think he's man. an old what? Yeah, no. he's an older guy, if I remember older. correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. It's great. Uh as a young man, I would like to disagree. Anyway. I mean distinguished. I mean Ooh, I know I play I said I do play I'm just like a kid and I'm like 50, so <laughs> it's not we're kid, all just kid. trying to reclaim that youth. Yeah. Anja, you grab the distinguished Merrick into your big burly arms and oh, look Jesus. down into a hole. The girly Heedless arm. of the fact that you're insane. Yeah, that I don't you like have being a phobia touched. against being touched. Yeah, we and kind as of such, forgot that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm gonna need you oh. to be the first person to roll tonight. And I'm going to need a dread save. That is a wisdom save. DC 13 against yep. your insanity. And a point of uh, what I already had, I gained a point of dread immediately. And then I'm yes. making this. So just Correct. so the viewers know. She is currently at three levels of dread. Oh, thank, nope. I failed. It wasn't a one DJ, huh? but it was, it was under a 13. Because of course it was. I sat there and rolled my dice and rolled. Okay. 12, 15, 16, great. What'd you roll? roll just out of curiosity. I gotta look it up. I rolled I rolled a nap three on the die, of course. Oh, don't worry about that then. You you failed definitely. I definitely oh yeah, no, I did not make it. I know it the DC's a 13, so I'm not in great so shape. As you grab onto oh, Merrick shit. and leap down the hole, there's this sudden realization of what you've done, and you immediately drop him let go and fall to your knees in this hole now give me another dread save dc 13 fucking to see if you go crazier i did i made it i rolled a 14 in the die so All just right. for the record that's a plus so it's two so the first roll would have been a five and that's a 16 Oh my god, I hang, hang I hung on to my sanity. Holy shit. <laughs> Although what this failure just couldn't hang on to me. All right. Yeah. <laughs> what <laughs> well, I mean, I like to think she wasn't thinking when she was just thinking to save you, and, and then it's like her mind is gonna make her pay. So what am I at? What dread am I at now? You are at five. Oh Jesus Christ. You are okay. in a bad situation. 
And so you guys find yourself at the bottom of a hole dug this by a, a large tremors-like worm, a graboid, almost. Uh, and Anja is behind you, Merrick, uh, and Riley is down there with you, having uh, teleported himself shortly after you. The hole is beginning to fill with smoke as the gunpowder boom went off just right behind you the building itself has collapsed in there is fiery uh, a fiery bonfire fire 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 uh in the whole entrance above you inferno uh, in the in oh well no, I'm going to stick with fiery fire fire. Um, and actually, you are panicked. So, yeah, Anja, you are trying to get away from these people as much as you possibly can. Well, there's only one way to really go. I just keep, yeah, I freaking run down the... I run down the, the, uh, the tunnel. Even if I go by them, whatever. I just, I just go I shove right by them. Touch them yep. again, real quick. No, I don't. I know. <laughs> I do everything. I do everything in my power to not touch them. I, you know, I literally, you know, how do I shape shape my body around so I don't touch anything? I don't even want to touch the wall at the moment. I am so freaked out. How far did we fall down? Like, are we like just under the surface? Are we? Yeah, how far down was it? I mean, I didn't take damage from that. I just took damage from, I assume, shrapnel and... Uh, you fell about fire. 30 feet or so down into the hole, but it's a worm. It didn't go straight down. It kind of went down at a bit of an angle, so it's like a nice, easy roll, roll, roll in the hay kind of deal, um, like you used to do when you were kids. <laughs> I'm sorry, where were we here? I was... I was... I'm, memory. Apparently, I'm running like hell out of the through the tunnels yeah you guys are running like hell um there's at a certain point where you manage to calm down collect yourself <laughs> perhaps the party riley and merrick managed to corner you spread their arms out no! wide so you can't get past them go away And you will drop down to a dread level four. Okay. That's still not good. <laughs> Do you get the effect or is it just a number? Right? It's just a number at this point. It's just a number at this point, yeah. All right, cool. You guys... Um, not a good number. Find yourselves in the tunnels <sighs> under Farzine. Uh, you're able to eventually make it to the surface and out over a wall as you had planned. Yeah. Totally according to plan. All going plan, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you guys managed to find yourself outside the wall uh, in the jungles just a little bit there. Is Was this like a an exact meeting spot we were supposed to meet. So I, I'm just basically trying to figure out if I know yes. he's missing. This is an exact meeting spot that okay. you guys are supposed to plan here. We'll leave, we'll leave what I want to do. Yeah. For now. As I regain my exposure. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, I made, I made the insanity save. That was the big one. Yeah. <clears throat> so. I have to go and I have to ask you guys mm -hmm. a, a couple of questions. I mean, Riley, obviously, I had the big questions for, and I was going to ask you guys to role play a little bit, you know, as you get outside the walls or maybe as you're waiting for Bran. You know, there's not a specified meeting time, but there is a place, and he should be there sooner rather than later. Um, but while you're waiting for him, um, but since Riley's not necessarily here, I've just got to ask Merrick. Um, well, I haven't gotten seen you since two sessions ago. 
this party has been nothing but absolute trouble for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely a bit more than uh, just described a simple <laughs> guide them through a couple tunnels. That, you know, to yeah, you'll be able to map out some new places in Parsi. Yeah, that no one's done before. Just a simple m- missing persons case. Ask a few questions. Yeah, <laughs> you know? sure. I mean, at this point, you are wanted for treason. You were hired as a contractor for the military. They are not going to take too kindly. I mean, you probably aren't even going I'm probably to get not getting, trial. Probably not getting paid, that's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> and I mean, the other thing I just had to ask is, you know, you have seen some really, really awful things. Uh, and unlike our two uh, uh, head cases over here, you've <laughs> actually managed to keep calm and collected. No. And I just have to sit here and think to myself, <laughs> what has Merrick seen that has allowed him to just be like, I'm too old for this shit? Yeah. <laughs> Just keep yeah, going. Well, yeah, just you know, go. I just roll with it. You know, <laughs> that's that's probably not a good thing. <laughs> what Merrick hasn't told us yet is he's actually been married three times. <laughs> and that has kept his mind. After that, nothing phases his mind. <laughs> Same shit, different day. <laughs> yeah. I think my favorite I mean, bar, yeah, bar burned down. You. Huh? <laughs> I think my favorite bar burned down. I'm a bit bummed about that. Uh, yeah, that's. <laughs> it is. Oh, there's a big inferno in town. Do we know? I mean, well, the the warehouse, but do we? I don't suppose at that distance we see the uh, the other um, building. From where you guys are at, there is, um, along with the. <coughs> ever-present glow of the goddess of light statue uh, in the center of town. There is definitely an orange glow actually coming from different areas that you can just kind of see rising out. And if you two don't have anything you want to RP right now. Well, I mean, are you are you okay? I'm okay. Are I'm you healing. okay? <laughs> Um, <laughs> kind of had a moment back there. So I mean, I'm just not looking good. Well, she's not looking great either. Because yeah, it reminds you of your second ex wife. <laughs> doesn't want to be done. <laughs> no, I, no, her her like back is like a, I said, I assume it wasn't just fire, it was shrapnel that oh. nailed her going down the hole. So her back is like all wounded and instead of burned. And so She's gonna. Uh, I'm gonna basically cast like all my healing spells that I have left, which is all my first levels. Uh, so she looks a little better. I'm like, uh, no, I'm not okay. I haven't been okay in a while, and I really it's frustrating. It's like I. It's like I know how I feel being afraid of touching things. It's irrational. But there's nothing I can do. I try. I try to fight it, but there's it's like I'm not in control of my emotions. It's more emotional, I think. Yeah. Fuck. Where the hell is Bran? Where the, where the hell he's not back yet? How are you doing though? Did I did I did I manage to did you did you get hurt at all there? No, I'm okay. Yeah, I've oh I, I've fallen off bigger heights before. Sorry, I dropped you. But uh, at least, but my goal was to get you out of the path of the explosion. That you did. And and I look at Riley. No character and player's not here, but he's still here. I look at Riley and and make sure that he's okay and he looks okay. he looks okay too and it's like oh at least he's got a get out of jail free card <laughs> like all right well yeah riley is as you look over him he's got this adrenaline running through him a little bit uh, kind of a little bit wide-eyed like oh, oh this is interesting and just kind of like that he's an adh kid 
and a room full of toys and it's just like oh huh, huh. and uh, you see that he eventually just kind of settles down uh, and, and he goes back into reading his tablet which looks yeah. a lot smaller than it used to feel and... it's smaller than it used to be mm-hmm um, I know he's not here, but is there any way I can ask him as to why I'll notice it and I'll, I'll ask? I'm like, your tablet's smaller. What, hap- what happened? Oh, uh, I, I had a dream. Oh, that's funny. So did I. <laughs> oh, what'd you dream about? The usual weird creatures in a strange land. She's still trying to process all that, too. He's, he's busy writing it down. <laughs> he's, yeah, he is. What kind of creature? How many tentacles? Fingers? Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's, I, I talked with this strange rat-faced, bat, rat-faced, bat-eared, tentacles on chin, uh, too many fingers and toes and a tail being. But he was seemed to be highly intelligent. Meanwhile, I'm leaving out all the good shit. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm still trying to process that too. Um, although now they have a minute, I'm just gonna see if I can put maybe put one, two, and two together mm-hmm. based on my past. So couldn't do uh, nope. <laughs> Somehow I can't figure out that mother might have wanted me for whatever this fucking purpose is. Uh, it, I said it was, it was very intense. Like I was actually there. I'm not sure what to make of it. I've had weird dreams my whole life, though. So, or well, not my whole life. Sorry, since I, sorry, <clears throat> edit that because she wouldn't have said that. Uh, I've had weird <laughs> dreams since I probably hit about puberty. Mm-hmm. Now, was this around your first period or? You- <laughs> I don't forget that. Yeah, ah. sure. <laughs> when I was about 12. About 12, I was going out with Joe Josephson. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that's, that's funny. <laughs> And I'm married to a guy named Joe. <laughs> In reality, yeah, not Josephson though. No, oh, okay. I was close. Right. I was pretty close. Okay. Um. Yeah. As you guys sit there and talk for a little while, I, I will um, start... Riley being very, very curious to a very unnerving point. Like he's kind of obsessed with this uh, hmm. uh, idea of retaining all this information down. You know. Riley, but maybe it's a little bit more. Real more? That is unnerving because I mean he already is pretty extreme and mm-hmm. it's studying. And I mean, either of you can look and it is sure. a little bit dark, but you notice Riley looks a little bit different too. Does like he's got these little flaps. Like gills? On the side of his neck, like gills. You mean like the scales have become more pronounced on his skin. Oh wow, there's two of them going through. Have so started what... to kind of appear between. Oh the sh- There's two of them that are. You don't know that. Shut up. I don't know that. This is Carol talking, not Andre. <laughs> yeah. uh, and just as you kind of notice, and you're like, "Hey, Riley." There's rustling in the bushes. Riley hears it? All of you hear it. Oh, okay. okay. I, I go. Coming from the side. And a figure steps out. Hey, how you doing, Bran? Are you uh, ready to roll initiative? Oh, uh, well, wait. We don't know that, Tim. Well, oh, rolling okay. initiative. It could be him. It could be someone else. Go, Bran. Are we rolling initiative? We are rolling initiative. I mean, really, it's just going to be a back and forth. So, oh, we're rolling initiative for role play. Awesome. Would you like me to go first, or would you like you to go first? I rolled a twenty-one. You are faster, so yeah, you would end up going first. 
So okay, so let us. I guess let's get the scene so I understand. Mm-hmm. We're in the house. It's burning. Has the fire gotten inside the house yet? The fire um, has started to. Several windows are broken on the front end of the house where you had originally set the fire. You can definitely see the orange flames. I'm sorry if I cut out there for half a second. Um, starting on the sides of the house because this is a very big uh, welcoming chamber. The gliding stairs going up to the balcony. You can see a receiving room to the left. You see a dining room to the right. Uh, and you can definitely see where flames are kind of licking up in either corner there. Uh, and it is a fast moving flame. As you have uh, like I said, delightfully described last time, it's very dry. Okay. You think right now you have time to certainly get any questions that you wanted to ask or just try and figure out what's going around. But uh, even as you are kind of processing all this information, Alwiggy kind of descends a few stairs, puts his hand on Marcus's shoulder. Commander Corwell, your brother. Stay calm, Marcus, like we talked about. He cannot ruin our plans. You will succeed. You will show your father what it is. But you should probably stop him now, just before he ruins anything even more. I have a few things to grab. And he ascends the staircase and proceeds to go into a different room. Bran will watch him go, but then Mm -hmm. turn back to Marcus and say, Why? Why have you aligned yourself with this filth? What are you talking about? This the man ghouls. shows me respect like our father never did. The ghouls, they are horrendous, unnatural things that should be abolished from this planet. And you work with them? What the hell has he promised you? And he begins descending the stairs, uh, unsheathing a long sword. These people were under the thumb of the previous citizens. I am helping them. Helping them? Mm. Have you seen the people dead in the other room? And he chooses to ignore the question. And he's going to start taking a swing at you. If you would like to respond first, this would be... Um. I will use my action to attempt to disarm him. Okay. Uh, I don't call how that exactly works. Well, I don't know if that's just like an athletics check or what. You just, you prepare to do something and then you don't read up on the rules. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's my job, isn't it? You are the GM. You can decide how it works. I believe we are making an athletics check against his. Um, I think I probably would allow acrobatics in your case. Okay. Just being... Yeah, I'll literally try to step in and kind of uh, pull it away from him after fashion using my own momentum versus my strength. So that'll be the reason, I guess, for that. Actually, you make an attack roll. Oh, I do? Okay. At which, I mean, it's probably going to end up being the same thing. Let's find out. Roughly. Um, all right, unarmed strike. Okay. 19. 19. All right. With his... I'm hoping he's unarmored. Hopefully I caught him while he was sleeping. Oh, unfortunately not. It looks like he is... Not quite dressed to the nines, but fairly close to it. Uh, never get so excited that. that you just throw your stuff everywhere. There it is. 
Okay. 17. Nope. And he actually gets advantage on that. And you actually managed to knock this long sword out of his hands. All right. And I'm going to like toss it as far as away as, as I can. Mm-hmm. And then uh, as a bonus action, I will spend one Kai point to do patient defense so all attacks uh, have disadvantage against me. Okay. You disarmed him. What's he going to do? Does... He honestly just doesn't like you, and he's just going to start swinging uh, uh, with his fists. So that... so that is a natural one for the first one there. And... So he does have... So patient defense... Uh, let me just read it off to you quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I can find it. Uh, okay, so I'm basically taking the dodge action. Yep. Okay. Oh! So he starts swinging at you, uh, misses every time. That last one was a two and a natural 20. Nice. And that's why you do that. Yep. yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah, he just comes descending now. You knock the sword out of his hands and he just starts swinging at you. You have to take everything! I have a quick question before I respond. Yes. When, he, when he's striking at me, does mm-hmm. it seem like natural or does anything seem out of place? Uh, like an angry person trying to take a swing at you. I, you got to be more specific with your question. Does he have supernatural strength or not? It does not appear so. And you're fuzzy. I understand that. And it's just going to be that way. <laughs> His camera's in. Yeah. A-hole. Well, my, my, my camera's temperamental too. Your camera's a dick. There you go. Eh, no, better. it's not, better. not fixing. It's not my fixing. eyes are open. Don't worry about it. It's fine. So, um, <laughs> as he swings, says, I've taken nothing from you. I have lost so much. That, and if you continue with that, he draws a knife on you. And the flames begin closing in around the house uh, a little bit more. The rooms to either side of you, your back is warm against the main door. Hey, I'm back. All right. The doors behind you, there's light coming off of it. You can feel heat coming through the doors as flames lick up underneath, and he draws out his dagger. You've had nothing. You gained everything. You took my father's love from me. And he starts swinging at you. Uh, You haven't actually, did you want to dodge again? Yeah, I'll dodge again. So I will I will actually just not spend a Kai point since I'm not attacking. I will just use my action to dodge. Okay. All right. So that is eight. That is going to be a 22 to hit. Even with disadvantage? Dang. 13 and a 15. Yeah, that hits. Okay. And here's the best part. As he is saying this, he is swinging with some sort of righteous, maybe to him, fury. (laughs) And there we go. Let's see. You take five slashing damage. And you take 13, 19, 21 Necrotic damage. Six total. Mm. And there appears in his eyes as he draws blood glee and he starts swinging again. Let's see, that is going to be a 18, I assume, does not hit. 18 just hits. Oh, does it? <laughs> yes. God damn it. 
Okay. He swings again. And again, uh, six slashing damage or piercing damage from this dagger. Mm -hmm. And six more necrotic damage as there just seems to be more weight uh, uh, to this dagger than what appears. And, you know, as you look at them, it's this... Mm, gosh, how do I describe it? Yeah, this unbridled nobility. He's the one who's in charge. I had everything. I was groomed to be the new lord. And then you and your whore of a mother showed up. And you took that from me. You were always his favorite. Um, I have a question. I have an answer. There's it chandelier around here. You like. Is there a chandler chandelier? Ooh. Uh Let's see, we've got percentile dice. Go ahead and roll. Seventy-one. Seventy-one. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, the chandelier is actually in the other room there. This one has uh, some nice uh, candle sconces that kind of line either wall as well as the um, stairwell going up. Although it's very brightly lit in this room and the cracking of wood becomes even more apparent. You're up. Um, I will I'm try to strike him. Okay. First attack. Uh, 18 to hit. 18 will hit. Will hit. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's going to be seven bludgeoning damage. Okay. And I'm going to use a key point, a key point for starting a strike. So okay. for a con save, um, DC 16. Okay. That is a 17 on the die. Of course. I will strike again mm -hmm. as my second attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a four on the die. So that's only 10. I'm sure that's going to miss. Uh, yes, that is a miss. Uh, then I will Use a Kai point as my bonus action to do Step of the Wind. Okay. So that lets me disengage and get to it to describe it. Uh, you said an 18 hits? Uh, it allows, you... allows me to disengage. I'm so aware. there's no type of opportunity. An 18 hits? Jeez. Yes. Yeah. Oh God, how did he hit me? Uh, and that is five points of damage as he just kind of clotheslines you and then draws the dagger back, stopping you in your tracks. You don't get to run away to mommy anymore. Oh, man. Oh, Jesus. Oh, well, I'm down to six hit points. <laughs> Uh, crap. Yeah. That's my action. All right. All I ever did was knock over a few vases. I didn't deserve any of this. I was the one who was blamed. I hate you. 18 again on the dime. And as he makes this strike against you, uh, he, the dagger begins to glow as he lunges out at you. And you are going to take, let's 
starting off with six piercing damage. That puts me at zero. Yeah. <laughs> and the rest is going to take you below, but it's not going to take you below to the point of... Below, below. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he pretty much kills you. I'd say uh, uh, he was going to blinding smite you, uh, but I would suppose you're on the floor right now. And as he goes, he leans down onto the floor over your body. I'll say you have enough awareness as he puts the knife to your throat. He thought I was just some dumb idiot who would just take orders. I came here to show him I could lead people. But he couldn't let me have that either. He sent you because he thought I would fail. He knew I would fail, but I know. I am saving the people here. And I don't need him anymore. Certainly don't need you anymore either. Marcus, we have our things. We must go. Quickly. And Alwiggy descends the stairwell there, his arms clasping around uh, uh, several books uh, uh, and a bag full of something. Let him burn with the fire. If your father asks, we can tell him it was an accident. We don't want to ruin your future forever. And Corwell begins to slide the knife. Shoulder slump. I hope you feel everything. Spits in your face. Stands up. And leaves the room. And the house begins to burn around you. The walls come down in the dining room. They begin roaring up the steps. And smoke begins to fill the building. Luckily, you're on the ground. But this whole room is brightly lit. You had a question, Brad. Uh, I was going to ask if uh, I should make death saving throws. Go ahead and give me your first one. Come on, not 20, man. That stabilizes me. That's a success, or that's a success, I should say. It's, it's one. one. It's one. You got to have three to that's stabilize. Right. Yep. Oh, and then man. you're still in a burning building. Mm -hmm. So, what's going through Brand's mind right now? <laughs> Tweety birds. I'm so sorry. I'm I'm gonna say that you know. <laughs> I'm at zero. Teetering at the conscious. Yeah, you're, yeah. I was you're uh, that put me. Yeah, that la that six took me exactly to zero. Obviously, any extras would have taken me below if it, that happened. Everything but, else took you below. So yeah, yeah, you're right to be making saving throws, but. You know, um, just as you're you're dying there, this could be the end of your character. What mm -hmm. what is What's happening? First, it's just flashbacks through childhood. Yeah, I'd say for this saving throw. Mm -hmm. um, being not remembering much at early life, uh, remembering growing up in the mansion, but always a sense of 
slight isolation, odd looks by servants. Um, the teasing and jeering of Marcus and other noble kids that came over uh, time spent reading in the library. Yeah, I imagine there were maybe a few games of knights and goblins and somehow you were always picked as the goblin. Oh yeah. As these noble kids can chasing you around. Little redhead redheaded goblin. Redheaded goblin. There he is. <laughs> running away from that. Maybe injuring yourself or maybe running to hide behind your mother. We see her again, much different than the last time we saw her running out of that house. In Rizante, big gown, gloves on her hand, dress just all the way down, a high collar, and we see as the kids are chasing after you, you run behind her, uh, almost knocking her over, and she turns, giving these kids a stern look. Marcus, you should know better. That's not how you treat your brother. Go talk to your father. Now! In that stern way that a mother does. And, you know, she turns around to comfort you. And you're not trained. You don't have those eyes that you do now. But you can see that her sleeve is kind of rolled up a little bit. And she tugs it down. And the camera in this flashback, we see scales along her arm that she hides as she pulls these sleeves down back to cover her hands with the gloves there. Cupping your head in hers as she looks at you. Make another death saving throw. Come on, damn it. Well, again. Passed? Yes. Very nice. <laughs> Any thoughts of the recent things, of the parties? I would think actually the memories would go to older as a teenager. Definitely. Hmm. 12 years old, 13 years old, mm -hmm. reading often. But then in the city one day, seeing the church of the Raving Queen and its macabre ma but majestic uh, Gothic structures, the priests clad in silver and black ravens uh, cawing a scene where the a priest presides over a funeral procession but then there's a drunkard that comes out and one of the uh, one of the attendants of the raven queen steps up and simply is able to push them aside with barely any effort. And then going into the monastery, choosing to go this way. His mother, dismayed by that, but also supportive by the choice. And then it flashes to the training, the very harsh training of choice, not going into the clerical divine nature. Her brand does not seem to be able to connect to it, but instead going to the other forms of 
training that is available, a very uh, different style of training, one of medicine and acupuncture, channeling one's inner self through those abilities. But the training is more than just striking a point or reading or dissecting. It is also understanding what pain is. Brand strapped to a wall, beaten by the rod, whipped by the lash, bones broken over and over again, burned, gouged, stabbed, exposed to disease and plague, to truly understand what suffering is be able to understand when life can be saved and when it is better to simply let it end. Make another death saving throw. Oh God. That would be a fail. As you just go back to all this punishment you've taken you're just interrupted by a cough and blood coming out of your mouth the fire has reached the upper level by some reason though It doesn't actually swallow the room you're in quite yet. It's there. It's strong. The flames are just licking higher and higher all around you. And in the corner, in the doorway, towards where the servants' quarters was, you see a dark shadow. In a space no shadow should be. And it begins to grow in definition. It gets clear as the fire starts to fade into starlight. A gown of feathers and as the head turns to look at you a mask of pure ivory looks out from the shadow. Eyes like black holes. They don't, they aren't black, but they seem to draw in all light all life around it. And they're locked on your eyes. Make a death saving throw. You had constitution to the roll, correct? Or is it just a straight 10? Straight 10. I do believe it's a straight 10. Straight 10. Then that is a fail. Fuck. God damn it. You had to drag it out. Mm -hmm. Damn you. (laughs) I couldn't hope for anything better. (laughs) This is what's so great about this game. (laughs) Figure walks towards you. Oh, god damn it. There's no hesitation in your mind. There's no doubt. She's here. 
with you. Come for you. A hand reaches out towards you, but then stops, pulling itself back in reserve. She's distant. Not cold, though. Still, but not passionless. And a voice echoes in your mind. You've done well. Even after all the horrors that you've seen, they were not made for mortal men. <laughs> Unfortunately, you are not a mortal man. You have been tainted by them. And I'm not sure I have claim of you yet. Your body is infected as it infects your mind, even now, head cocking to the side. I have to say this out loud because I forget there's audio listeners as well. Yeah. Yeah. Head cocking to the side. If you die now, It'll be a terrible battle against forces of incomprehension, even to us. must rid yourself of this. I do believe this is oh. the final final death saving throw. There it goes. God damn it. That is a five on the die. God, fuck it. And that is the last one, yes. Hmm. Your eyes close. And the sound of rushing water fills your ears. Anja, Merrick, Riley. <laughs> A figure you do not recognize. Yep. comes out of the bushes. With him is a charred raven mask. Hmm. 
I'm I'm Oleg. Uh, Bran may have told you about me. I was I was helping him out with a distraction so that my family could get out. Um I don't know why. He um he set the magistrate's house on fire. Ran in there. Um, Commander Corwell and the magistrate left out the back building. Uh, several men and ghouls were carrying bodies out the back. I managed to get in there and I'm sorry, but Pran has passed. Oh, what? What? I just can't even, like, all right, I see the mask. I know what I just said, but it just... He just looks at you. And she comprehends it, too, because, sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. And he just, I don't, I don't know why he did it. Uh, we were, we, together we were supposed to get out of the city. I don't know what took over him. He Where's was, his body? Where are his remains? This is important. I I had to leave him in the fire. A, a beam <clears throat> collapsed on top of him. I couldn't move it. And I'm not sure I could have carried a body out. Is there going to be anything left that they can exploit? He was becoming pretty badly burned. And I mean this mass that you look at. Uh, and if you want to show it off, DJ... Do you have a bird one? Or maybe one? you don't want to show it off yet. I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about that. Do you actually have a bird one? A blackened mask. Torched almost into charcoal. Is in his hands. And I mean, you can even look at his hands and Oleg himself has a few burn burns on his hands he was doing so much for us that I tried my best but can you take me to my family I, I don't mean to do what we gotta do time for this later I just want to make sure that the ghouls won't fucking destroy his body this is bad enough that would be worse <sighs> sorry <laughs> God, I never act like this when my own characters die. <laughs> Consumed by fire, though, that's that's a good thing, right? For 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 his his religion, for the, the Raven Queen. Hopefully, it just would be bad if there's anything left that the ghouls can eat. That would be to him. That was a desecration. We can't allow that to happen. But and I look over at what's his name? Olo? Oleg. 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 L E G. I look over at Oleg and I'm like, but have to focus on the living first. And he kind of straightens himself out a little bit because he was just looking 
he was giving the bad news. Let's um, go. Take, you know where we need to go, right? I just know it's that way in some direction. Do we have to go back through town or is there a way to sneak around? No, you are luckily on the side of town that as part of the plan, it's like, yeah, make sure you take this side of town out and then just straight into the jungles. You're supposed to meet up with Captain Kenza um, uh, and Pasela eventually. You're both headed in the same direction. Um, Merrick, you're the cartographer. I'm not even going to ask you to roll anything. <laughs> you know... Uh, actually, you know what? I am going to ask you to roll because there's a couple possibilities. What is this? Uh, survival? Nature or survival, I think. Yeah, they're the same for me, so... Oh, okay. Well, there you go. It's like I planned that out. <laughs> uh, dirty 20 dirty 20 yeah I think that's good enough um, uh, while Kenza uh, Momoa Pasela um, even Oleg have not seen where this uh, refugee camp is describing just how many people are there um, again the jungles are dangerous whatever place they're looking for needs to be defensible and large enough to house that many people there is a huge cave um, it would probably take you all night to get to although considering right now that it's eh, probably about two three in the morning or so oh god I we're mean, gonna be freaking tired <laughs> <laughs> that's not part of my plan don't worry about it um the jungle is lit well enough from the goddess of the light statue that you can make your way um there in the dark for the most part. Um, yeah, but a large cave system, um, you would know uh, that it does actually go pretty deep, but you have been warned away from actually going into the tunnels uh, uh, until just recently. So it's not something you fully uh, has discovered. Um, and if you remember, you recently received a map um, very well detailed of the island with uh, four or five X marks and the words lies, lies, lies written across it in yeah, that's right. brown, mm -hmm. red ink. Coincidentally enough, one of those X's coincides with where this, uh, this cave is. Um, and so you guys begin to trek through the jungle. Who's in the lead? Me. Okay. Make sure you don't stop abruptly. I don't warn suppose, people, otherwise they're going to bump into you. I suppose Oleg. Oh, God, I know healing me is going to be a real problem. Uh, and go ahead and drop down to, well... No, that's not even it. it. Well, no, that's right. I made the insanity check, so never mind. It's yeah, no. it's no. It doesn't you matter. We don't to freaking drop have down a... to dread three. By the way, at this point, dread oh, okay. three is just generally the stay well, point. You can go up. I'm not 100 percent sure that that would drop because of the way she feels right now. Oh yeah. Well, I'm saying that before when you were RPing and working your way out and waiting for. Right. Okay. I'll go with show three. Up that. You've as had time to call for, it out. I said, as for whether or not that this whole thing is kind of a trigger, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll go with for now. No, because she's focused on helping the people here. Yeah. So 
I will definitely be in the lead. Okay. And yeah, I'll try not to stop short or anything and let people bump into me. <laughs> <laughs> And the four of you trek off through the jungle. Uh, go ahead and give me a check, Anja, just as far as speed. What check? Uh, Survival? Survival is probably the best one you got. I'll take a nature. I'll take <coughs> a caption. Um, nope, survival is better than nature. Mm -hmm. oh, Why in the hell can't gosh. it... Of course, fucking terrible. Uh, Jesus fucking Christ, that's a nine. Wow. I really, okay. you know what? I freaking can't roll above a ten. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Mary, she does kid. not know the way, or she just seems to yeah, be I just, uh, her head somewhere else. Her head is definitely somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. I will totally go with that. There's a lot to unpack, actually. Her head is very much... She's trying to focus on this, but there's so much between the dream, this brand, and just what happened. Just too much to unpack. So, yeah. So, do you need me to take over then? Yeah, go. You take. The, actually, yeah, you should be in the lead. She, she did it to be protective, but in reality, you should be the one leading. Yeah, after the third time we pass the same tree, I'll, I'll take over. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a nine. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Can I give him advantage yeah, on that roll, please? This is not necessarily a don't get lost roll. This is can, a can I how give, fast you're going. Okay. Can I can I give him advantage at all on this? Can I work with him? Can we? Is the path wide enough where we can be together? Yeah, I will say. I mean, I'm going to try to do my best to stay enough away so that I won't accidentally touch him. <laughs> but uh, if I can give him advantage, yeah, what's your survival? Uh, plus seven. Oh, yeah. No, I'll give you advantage. You're better than me. <coughs> if we can All do right. that, that I would be great what. right now. At some point, you take a break clearly you guys aren't thinking properly <gasps> you know Anja I think we've got a good idea of how you're feeling uh, about <laughs> like, Lance Lost yeah. oh, Mary, how are you doing you know it's a guy probably eh, a week week and a half ago 10 day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, so... what do you think What's I mean, thinking about? I mean yeah, like you said, I, I obviously don't have the same emotional connection that you know, Anja had. Just, but you know, he's I've, an original gangster. It's it's always hard to lose lose somebody on the uh, on the trail, or you know, when doing this kind of things, and you know, it's I, I've experienced loss like this before. You know, it's it's usually why I you know to, tend to work alone is that you know it's hard to lose somebody, and it's not something I like. So I'm. I, I probably, should, you know, holding it within. Pressing it, yeah. yeah Stiff upper lip, as it were. Yeah. yeah. Oh, if we stop, she she won't. In fact, she'd love to fucking yell into the void right now, but knows that's a really bad probably, idea. Probably not a good idea. <laughs> I want to just scream. I won't fucking scream, but she knows it's a bad idea. Because you it's what? jungle, it's Let's dangerous. Let's make this a wisdom saving. No, I, I no. I feel like she this knows is a enough one. that this is. A, She's this is a, really hurt right now. Oh my She's god! Not saying. You know I'm gonna fail, right? You know it's Let's set it fail. at a nice, simple DC ten. DC twenty. I rolled a fucking bad twenty. Of course. There I'm you go. This. <laughs> hey, hey, no, yeah, she no, knows she... it's a terrible idea. She could just cry, but she's not gonna scream as much as she'd like to right now. And then you feel a hand on your shoulder. <laughs> Are you doing okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That would be it. That would be so it. 
just I, I will just roll I will just nap on that freaking check just put her to seven and put her in a freaking catatonic state and she doesn't do anything that would be it this is like then I uh, I mean at least we had five days between the dungeon from hell and this mm-hmm. but this is oh my god she's a wreck I have never played a character that's been so mentally wrecked in my <laughs> life this is freaking awesome oh I can't stop. I said, it's unbelievable. I don't even feel this bad when my own characters die. What the hell is going on? Damn it. All right. Anyways, <clears throat> get my composure back. Uh, so, yeah, she'll sit, she'll cry probably and quietly and try to regain some sense of composure. <laughs> It's really yeah, tough. You know, with that Dude, next looks... 20, I, I just wonder if maybe Anja is just like a duty above yeah, all in this case. Protect, where... protect. She was brought up before oh. uh, to protect others. The parent with dad was a ranger and they would patrol the woods around town and make sure nothing, all threats, there weren't any threats to the town. So she was basically brought up to have this real protective instinct of others. Mm-hmm. To why this feels so damn bad. <laughs> she lost somebody. But she wasn't there, so. But yeah, she, it's the resolve to get everybody safely to that camp. It's holding her together. Man, I wish I could have Riley here right now and just kind of I know. what he's thinking. But, you know, by the end of this Damn campaign, him. he's not going to have any idea who Bran is to begin with. So I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine in the long run. Oh, he's not going to. Do you think I'll have any idea who he even will be? <laughs> Riley's probably <laughs> trying, to, trying to steal the mask. And... No, no. Actually, who has actually who has the mask? Does he still have it? Did he give it to one of us? Uh, if someone asked for the mask, he, he gave I, it to them. I, I think. would have. I'd want it. Yeah, I was going to say, I think and I he's him. actually terrified of Riley right now. Oh, okay, then he would give yeah. him the mask probably. Yeah. Either you or Eric, so. I guess, yeah, I mean, yeah, since the beginning. Mm-hmm. Okay. She'll hold the mask yep. protectively, <laughs> make sure Riley doesn't get it. I don't think there's anything magical or anything to it anyways. It's just literally a plague, right? It's just a plague doctor mask, right, Brian? Yeah, sure. It is, right? It's as not as anything special. As far as we can tell. Well, it's kind of charcoal now, so mm-hmm. it probably wasn't magical. Yeah, you could probably convince, convince Riley to cast... Off the thing. It's, oh, no. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Awkward. Like mending on it? Nah, no, nah, I don't want to change it. I don't want uh, exactly. I mean, detect magic. Oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I do not want to convince. No, I don't want him to go there. If it was magical, then he'll probably flip and steal it. That's <laughs> true. Sorry, Riley, you're not here. <clears throat> All right. Time passes. Keep going. Um, the early, early light of morning is starting to peak up giving a soft, warm glow to the jungle. And you continue on your way. I believe this time one of you was going to roll with advantage. Merrick is going to roll with advantage. (laughs) Try this again. (laughs) He can roll better, too, probably. Uh, I rolled the same both times. 22. 22. Oh, nice. Okay. Um... Yeah, you guys move a lot faster now with a little bit of extra light, um, keeping Anja, you know, in the place right now. Maybe you're giving her your strong shoulder at the moment. Riley is <laughs> off somewhere else. Anja's he's probably barely reading it as he's walking. It could be potentially, <laughs> and and Anja is just kind of barely keeping it together. You've really become a rock in this group. And you start leading these people Fair. through. And you eventually 
run across tracks. Definitely human tracks, shoes. There's um, footprints from small children. Um, the bush around the area, you know, there's branches broken here and there. Oh, Lord. And I'm looking at this, by the way, thinking, wow, they made a really clear trail if people wanted to find them. Is there something I can do? Can I make survival check to try to help hide this? Sure. I'm going to have one of you make the survival check to continue following. The other one, the survival check to hide the tracks behind you. I'm trying. I'm going to do that. Since I've, He's better at waiting, and I'm going to do that. Well, I mean, it wasn't awful, awful this time. At least it was above a 10 total. <laughs> there was a 12. I just I give up. <laughs> I got a hey. 21, 21 to keep going. 21 to keep going. You are able to follow the tracks. Anja, you snap off a tree there and you start. Yeah. I you, mean, you think it, you're doing a good job. It'd be might. something that I freaking yeah. learned, you know, when I was a kid from Dear Old Dad. Sure. <laughs> and yeah, you continue following the tracks. With your skills, Merrick, you can tell that you're actually getting fairly close. Maybe an hour behind them. You start getting closer, maybe half an hour. And all of you begin to hear the sound. And if that didn't pick up very well, it was a mm. like. But uh, want to describe it? Like a big uh, mosquito. Yeah, insectoid is probably the closest, but it's not. You haven't rested. This is bad. <laughs> Imagine the sound of an an organ. Boom. Yeah, I but know what you you're... had pinched yeah. off the pipe a little bit so um if you were trying to make the noise yourself it would be h h h in 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 mm. mm. close together mm -hmm. but fairly an oddly sound it's not a sound that gets placed but it disappears off into the distance after a while and At some point, Merrick, another set of tracks joins the refugee tracks. And it's tracks you've never seen before. Inhuman? Couldn't possibly be human. Dude, it's what's which... weird as you stare at this, you see like this long trail, this long thick dragging marks. Like a tail or something? Like a tail almost, yes, but not necessarily moving side to side. And these like stilts on either side. Stilts? And a little indents in the ground. Little indents like they were still, sure. okay. Mm -hmm. That's weird. Uh, and then they change almost before your eyes. Uh, Anja, you literally see this tail indentations on either side. I assume Merrick points it out if I don't see yeah. it. Well, you see that. And Merrick, okay. as you're pointing this out to her, the trail changes. The mud shifts. And instead it's almost like if someone had stuck claw marks just kind of directly into the ground. Like if someone were walking on their fingertips heavily sinking into the mud and there's four or five 
possibly seven legs. What the frick? Seven. Seven. Hey man, it's it's Cthulhu. Nothing makes sense. No, no, it really doesn't. <laughs> There's absolutely no role we can make, right, to figure out what this could be. Is I there? mean, for you, you're just looking at similar tracks. It's Does it something mean... dragging along. Oh. I don't suppose Yog Sothri would come into play here. <laughs> I've had a lot of dreams of creatures. How fresh the tracks look. Incredibly fresh. Like yeah, and like last night. The tracks change again and they resemble bird feet. Two up, one down. And it's a weird <coughs> loping motion. So does any of this ping is familiar from a dream or anything like that? Nothing familiar from your dream. Hmm. Mm-hmm. If you got well, honestly, you can try and make a nature check, but you're not going to get it. I have the highest thirty-five can... or higher. Oh no, <laughs> no, I can make a twenty-four. Yeah, that ain't going to thirty-five. Do you need a fifth, I guess. I guess with the right class and and uh, oh crap, I can't remember what the hell this, the thing the ability is there. We get every. Yeah, expertise. Expertise might, but even then. Have arcana. That's a little bit of a lower check. I don't think I've got arcana. And, yeah, yeah. Just as you're just studying these tracks, you hear screams Fuck. ahead of you. I start running. And you hear the shriek of some strange creature. You all start running. Ola I start running. Is running ahead of you as fast as he possibly can. And you get bad. to a clearing. Anja. Oh no. You see this weird insectoid creature with what appears to be a Oh goodness! It's not. I said it's not the insectoid creature I saw in the vision, right? That he was using as a messenger. Oh no, no. That, okay, it's not that. That's something completely different. Don't worry, That'd it's be... not. It's not that bad. <laughs> oh, it'd be really funny if that thing showed up in this reality. Uh, you'll have to excuse me. Uh, my insect biology and nomenclature is not good. It's okay. It has a very large thorax. Uh, and then it's it's two separate main parts. Oh, God, this is going to be bad. One is this kind of fat, elongated thing with these holes up and down either side. Uh, and these flaps of skin kind of open up every once in a while like they're breathing air <laughs> almost. And you can see inside these like caviar almost this glistening mucus it's like a bug made it with a lobster mm -hmm. between the parts uh connecting them is what looks to be a human rib cage what the <laughs> white wow. bone and Shit. no actual flesh but like these the body of it is trying to push outside of it still so kind of like in between the rib cage is just more of this insectoid flesh uh, trying to push its way out of the rib cage but unable to jaws and like an insect almost it has the legs that end in these spear tips and there's eight of them Jesus. For a moment, you see this as well, Merrick, and then it shifts in front of you, changing into 
more of a a wasp amp hybrid with these extra long legs that end in hands that are claws and it shifts again this is a winged creature by the way well i figured is it Sorry, like too high to point. attack or something because well, let me finish describing it this is nice. amazing and merrick again it shifts in front of your eyes and it turns and uh for those who love tremors oh it looks like the ass blasters from tremors three oh i don't know i never saw tremors uh, uh it kind of looks like this weird elongated dodo bird pterodactyl thing with three sets of wings uh, a long hooked beak no eyes but every once in a while it just kind of flaps up and again you kind of see this caviar mucus membranes and oh. every once in a while flaps open up and it just keeps shifting and changing on you Merrick that your is breaking your eyes whatever this thing is whatever this blur is because eventually eventually your brain just has to block it out and it just kind of becomes this faded uh, uh, like a blurry spot in your eyes you can see clearly everything else so clearly in fact that you see that this creature is going after the trunk of this massive tree that looks like it's fallen over and it appears to be digging, clawing. And there's a young child scream, a girl. And Oleg runs forward. Libya! And charges out there. And this creature turns and underneath the tree uh, is Captain Kenza Aiden Pasela swinging wildly with oh, sorry is Aiden Pasela first mate Pasela uh, uh, swinging his sword wildly at this thing uh, and it looks to be a fairly large group of refugees tucked in as tight to the tree as possible, trying to get as far away from this thing as possible. And the creature and begins lifting itself off the ground as these flaps open up. Air, sound, music almost is blowing out of these holes on either side of its body. Not that you are aware of this, Merrick, as you just kind of blot this out in your head. And it proceeds to land on top of Oleg. A pincer comes out and shoves it into his chest. Oh, come on! We couldn't do anything? It all happened quite fast, and this thing is terrible to look at. <sighs> and we will roll for initiative. In two weeks. It's gonna end hey, everybody. early. Dick. That has been the Fred show. We are ending 15 minutes early because I stole 15 minutes. I usually steal 15 minutes of everyone's time after every session. So I thought I'd end it a little bit early uh, and give you guys some time to process. Uh, oh, fuck. Guys, thanks to our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice. Oddfish Games. Check out their cool projects. The Stein Project. How to RPG with your cat. Uh, Adventure Sense. Many others. Keep an eye out. They always come up with some new stuff. Pirate Dog Dice. Hit them up on Twitter to get some really cool dice made. Perhaps you want to uh, make a brand set of dice. Just have like a little uh, a raven mask <laughs> put inside of a D20. No, but uh, I but guess a pile like of ash. Over its no, eyes. no, no! It's just a pile of ash inside of a D twenty now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, um, DJ. Too soon. 
guys. That is <laughs> so sorry. No. Cred for tonight. <sighs> uh, any last words from anyone? Well, fuck. Yeah, that's good. I mean, Jacob, Merrick. Can't wait to see what. It is very long, twenty-four hours plus. Yeah. <laughs> Ran. Oh, I'm sorry. You're you're muffled under the did, burning building. Uh, did, we'll we'll have to get back to you. Can we have some, uh, any word from the player? Oh, okay. DJ, go ahead. It's <laughs> we, cold. Cold. <laughs> I imagine so. All right, guys, everybody wave at the camera. Say good night. Uh, Frank, thanks for holding on, and I hope you enjoy this early break we gave to you on yeah. our best campaign of the entire Yeah. <laughs>